Hello, I'm Casey Dinges, Senior Managing Director for Public Affairs, Membership and Marketing at the American Society of Civil Engineers. Thanks for joining us today for a discussion about transportation and infrastructure issues. My guest today is the Senior Senator from Oklahoma, James Inhofe. Senator Inhofe is Chairman of the U.S. Senate Environment and Public Works Committee and Senior Member of the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee. Mr. Chairman, thanks for letting us stop by your office today to discuss these important issues. Well, they are important issues. Glad to have you. Maybe you can tell our, our members a little bit about what interest the Environment and Public Works Committee has in the Federal Transportation. The Environment and Public Works Committee has the largest jurisdiction of any committee in the United States Senate. I mean, it covers everything. Right now we're talking about roads and highways. It covers that, public works and transportation. Uh, the committee is, uh, has a huge jurisdiction. And Barbara Boxer is the ranking member. Uh, I'm the chairman. Now, there's no one, no sharper contrast between an extreme proud liberal, that's what Barbara is, an extreme proud conservative, that's me. And yet, on transportation, we agree. That's the only area where we agree. We fight tooth and nail on everything else. The first thing is the, that old document that no one reads anymore or pays any attention to, it's the Constitution. It says what we're supposed to be doing here, defending America, and then roads and highways and bridges. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Now we need to remind conservatives, there's a problem that's out there that I think that your membership needs to be aware of. And that is you have so many of the conservative members of the Republican Party. See, and I can say this, I've been ranked as the most conservative no, member I've more than anybody record. else has, more times. So I can criticize conservatives or conservatives who really are not that conservative, but stand on the floor of the Senate and complain that we shouldn't be spending this money. You have to remind them, number one, it's in the Constitution. Number two, and this is important for your people to understand, I think they do anyway, short-term extensions are cost about 30% more. The last good bill we had was in 2005. It was a six-year bill. Then after that, we stumbled along with short-term, uh, three-month, six-month extensions, it made some even shorter than that. And anyone who's, I spent a, a career in building, building and developing, I know a little bit about this, and people who want to be able to get the very most need to plan their labor in advance and all these things. So we want to steer clear from short-term extensions. Now, how do you pay for it? We don't know yet, but I do know this when we did our 27-month bill, <clears throat> we paid for a combination of a lot of things. Uh, of course, uh, we, the, we're, we have a shortfall of $15 billion a year from the Highway Trust Fund. And then we, the rest of it, we took most of that out of our general authorization. Now, there's no reason that the general fund can't pay for part of it. Some of the junk that they pay for that we don't need in America doesn't hold a candle to the significance of a highway bill. So to start off with, we're gonna have the, the shortfall, most of it probably being made up from that source. Now, there, you'll hear a lot of people talking about repatriation that some people are even saying you can pay for the whole bill with repatriation. Money that's sitting offshore. Yeah, it's offshore and it's off the tax rolls. And if you bring that back uh, and give them favorable tax treatment to do that, that will create a windfall of somewhere, you know, about uh, $400 billion. But of that, if you take the percentage that that'll be taxed, then that still doesn't do just a, a fraction, maybe a third or a fourth of what it's gonna be necessary to add to the highway trust fund. It's gonna be a combination of those things. I've talked to Oren Hatch, Senator Hatch with the Finance Committee. Has, he's pretty confident that we have enough money to be able to do this. It now takes the priorities. And let me say something that is gonna sound unpopular to a lot of the conservative people. There's a thing called devolution. A lot of people in the uh, conservatives in the Senate say, well, we need to take this, repeal all of the federal taxes, and then have the states pass that tax as a state tax and send it back to the states. Here's the problem with that. And by the way, I'm the right one to talk about this because 20 some years ago, I was the father of devolution uh, uh, and, until I realized why it wouldn't work. And this is the reason. Yeah, it's easy to repeal the federal tax, but it's not as easy to pass 48 states pass a highway tax. In fact, it'd be, most studies have shown that the amount that you'd have to pass in a state tax of, of a gasoline user fee uh, increase would be around 30 to 40 cents a gallon. People aren't gonna do that. Yeah. And so you then, if you believe, as 
Eisenhower believed, as I think most people who really think it through believe, we can't get by with a patch system. You can't have Missouri and Arkansas and Oklahoma having three different systems where traveling through, you, it just wouldn't work. And so uh, if you believe in the national uh, uh, highway system, you've got to have the system. As I said, it's a national defense issue as well as an issue of uh, an economic issue. There are 17 senators who voted against the last bill, the one I just described, mm -hmm. who are still in the United States Senate. And those are the people that you need to concentrate on. You need to have your engineers and other people and supporters uh, to look and see how they voted last time, if they voted against it, say, you know, why'd you vote against it? And are you gonna vote against it again? I can assure you, if you confront them and they know that you're paying that much attention, that will be singularly the best thing that you folks can do. Is there any um, funding mechanism in the future that you think that we can start moving to and you know, what I'm thinking of or the vehicle miles traveled approach where we actually just pay for actually how many miles we drive regardless of the way we fuel our cars? Do you think in the future um, there'll be a healthy debate about something like that or other funding what mechanisms? The problem with that is, you know, there's something I learned a long time ago in government. Everybody wants to change until you advocate a change and they don't want it. And that's the type of thing everyone will calculate in his or her minds. How much more is this going to cost me? Uh, because maybe I drive more or something. So I don't think that that would work out. Now, what does work out in some areas, and Virginia is a good example, you have lanes uh, some that are restricted to some of the mass movers. Uh, you have uh, different approaches where you have partnerships between the public sector and the private sector. And they've worked real well, and, and, uh, and so it's going to be a combination of those things, uh, and it may be a combination of those things in this bill coming up, but I rather think that it'll be probably a, a form of repatriation, the general fund, and then, of course, the Highway Trust Fund. Thank you, Senator, for a very uh, interesting conversation Well, today. thank you for joining the fight. You know, we can't do it alone.